We are going to go over the three different ways you can represent state, actions, and the goals. The robot is tasked to handle the delivery of coffee and mail in the company. In this company, there are four locations, and it can reach these locations by moving in a clockwise and counterclockwise fashion. The environment is assumed to be fully observable to the agent. In the state, we have features to monitor the robot and the rest for the environment. The features have a set of possible outcomes. The robot's location has four outcomes for the four locations in the environment. It also tracks if the robot has coffee, has mail, if Joaquin wants coffee, and if the mail is waiting in the mailroom. This results in a state space of a size 64. There are some rules for the robot to follow. Mail can only be picked up if the mailroom has one. It cannot carry two of the same items at the same time. These items can only be dropped off in Joaquin's office. You can explicitly list out all the possible states and the resulting states when an action is performed. It can be thought of as a lookup table, where for a certain combination of state and action, there is a resulting state. If none match, then it is assumed that the agent won't do anything. Let's say the goal of the robot is to pick up coffee in the coffee shop with this initial state. It's going to start out by moving counterclockwise, so we can check the lookup table for this exact combination of state and action. Then we get the resulting state once the action has been performed. We can repeat this for picking up coffee. However, because we have to explicitly represent the state in as input and output, we end up with a state space size that is really big. It makes it difficult to maintain and reason with, just due to the sheer size of the state space. Instead, we can use a more action-centric model to check if the relevant features match what the action is expecting, and return the features that changed. An action here can be thought of as a function, where you can pass some features in and get the changed feature values. Using the previous example, the robot starts off in Joaquin's office. The office move counterclockwise action can be performed because the precondition matches the state, which updates the robot's location to coffee shop, or CS. Then the precondition of pickup coffee matches as well, so the robot now has coffee. However, this model is not expressive enough and has limitations with conditional effects. New movement actions tied to a location had to be created for it to emulate conditional effects. Even if it's doable, it is just a band-aid solution to the problem of the lack of expressiveness. We need a model that's more centered around the features themselves. Rather than when an action can be performed, we can instead add some constraints on when a feature gets updated and when it retains its value. These are known as causal and frame rules respectively. This is a representation centered around features. The effect is a value of a feature, which is returned when the condition of the rule matches. Here we want to make a rule for the robot's location, where it's set to coffee shop if it moved counterclockwise from the office. This is also an example of a causal rule, where the rule causes the value of a feature to change. The frame rule, which is the opposite of that, dictates if a feature gets to keep its value. Using the previous example, there are two rules that match the current state. The first is a causal rule, and the second is a frame rule. The robot updates its location to the coffee shop, but retains it not having coffee. Then, there are two more rules that match, where it keeps its location in the coffee shop and updates it having coffee. 